Hi there, I'm Danny Flexen. Welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday at 4.30pm to review the action from the weekend just gone. And the big show this weekend took place in Cardiff, uh, broadcast on Sky Sports. Uh, boxer, the promoter of course, it's Chris Eubank Jr. made his return to the ring against Liam Williams in a fight that was hugely anticipated. You know, a fight that was... Very much a domestic grudge match, but with world-level implications. Both men ranked in the top 10 at middleweight by a number of governing bodies. Um, and it just seemed very much like the winner would go on to perhaps have a, a really big fight next, or even a world title shot, while the loser would unfortunately look to, to have their time beyond the domestic sphere curtailed. Um, and I think that's kind of how it's going to turn out after Eubank Jr. dropped Williams officially four times um, and won a clear, pretty wide 12-round uh, decision in front of home fans for the Welshman. I would say that it was a, a kind of performance of two halves, if you like, from Eubank. The three uh, valid or authentic knockdowns all took place in the first half of the fight. Um, he was granted a fourth by the referee, which looked more like a bit of a push towards the end of the fight. Um, but in the second half, I think it's fair to say, rather than step on the gas and try to get his opponent out of there, Eubank decided to coast, um, which we'll talk about a bit more in a minute. Although he said in the post-fight that he wanted, because of a lot of the things Williams had said in the build-up, it's quite a fractious, bitter um, build-up to the fight. He wanted to punish him. Well, I'm not sure the best form of punishment is letting your opponent hang around and get rounds in the bank to the point that it seemed like he, uh, Williams might even mount an unlikely comeback. It was only that very questionable knockdown call by the referee towards the end of the fight that really sealed the victory for Eubank in the minds of most people watching. Um, the cards kind of told a different story, as it turned out. Um, so yeah, Eubank, very explosive early on. Uh, Williams' aggression probably wasn't as controlled or as measured as it should have been. And he was able to put Williams on the canvas three times, varying kind of degrees of, of how heavily he was put down. Um, but it just seemed like the timing, the patience and the the intelligence, the ring IQ, if you like, of Eubank Jr. was uh, to the fore in the early part of the contest. It was a lot after that for Williams to regroup and try and work his way back into the fight. It was a big deficit. Um, and not only that, he, he would a lot of his strength would have been taken away. He would have been questioning his tactics, um, having been caught so easily on those three occasions. And, and not just those, they were the ones that put him down, but he was caught a number of times in the early rounds. So there was a lot of things for him to work his way back from, from a, a mental and physical uh, perspective. But he did make inroads in the middle rounds. Now, how much of that is down to Eubank taking his foot off the gas and how much down to Williams kind of, determination, resilience, and also a slight change in tactics. You know, he moved his head a lot more, tried to draw the lead from Eubank Jr. rather than leading off. So he could draw the lead, either weave his way under it or around it or block it, and then land shots of his own in clusters and try to get Eubank up more against the ropes and in corners. You kind of felt like that was perhaps the game plan to begin with, but in the kind of amped up um, mindset from the build-up and just really want, knowing how important this clash was, Williams had kind of veered away from that and let his aggression get the better of him, as a lot of people predicted it might um, going into the fight. From the Eubank Jr. side, there's kind of pluses and minuses to his performance. He was able to win at a canter without expending too much energy and without taking much punishment. So on that side, it's a, it's a change in approach from him that will likely extend his career you know, you don't want to put too many miles on the clock at this sort of level if your, you know, overall or overriding ambitions is to get to the world scene. Um, but the flip side of that is one of the reasons people enjoy watching Eubank so much. It's not because he's a particularly likable character, no offence to him, um, but it's because he's, he's charismatic. He's uh, He says the right things outside the ring to get people's juices flowing. But more importantly, he's always delivered inside the ring, you know, real effort, full throttle, explosive combinations, doesn't stop trying, great engine is always cited when people talk about Eubank Jr. And power, now we saw the power on display early on, there's no doubt about that. Williams, we're not sure how the defeat to Demetrius Andrade affected his chin and his, his punch resilience or his, uh, yeah, his ability to take shots. 
But if we think that he's the same guy who stood up to Andre, got off the deck and, and took him 12 rounds and also toughed it out against uh, Liam Smith uh, a couple of times, then we have to say that Eubank's power is, is proven, certainly at middleweight, maybe not so much at super middle. So he's big and strong for the weight. But a lot of the reason people enjoy watching him is because he is aggressive, he does throw a lot of shots, and he does throw with bad intentions. Now, in the second half of the fight, we didn't see that really at all. He was far too content, in my view, and boxing is an entertainment business as well as a sport, far too content, in my view, to take his foot off the gas, coast to the finish line, instead of really trying to make a statement that would make people sit up and take notice and get Williams out of there. You know, his trainer is Roy Jones. People have criticised Eubank for maybe trying to pattern his style these days too much after his legendary coach. But the other side of that is Roy Jones didn't tend to let people hang around. Yeah, he was flashy. Yeah, he liked to show off as Eubank did in the Williams fight, posturing probably a little bit too much. But he also had that killer instinct, that menace, and he liked to get people out of there. He liked to finish in style. And that's something he perhaps needs to impart a little bit more to his latest protege. Um, so, yeah, I think it was a missed opportunity in that sense for Eubank on a big stage. You know, it wasn't on box office. A lot of people would have been watching. We haven't seen the viewing figures yet, but I imagine they were pretty impressive. There was a lot of buzz around the fight. Our numbers uh, around it were pretty good. And I know the other YouTube channels did pretty well out of it, too. So it was a, a bit of a missed opportunity to really, you know, put an exclamation point on the victory and have people talking in enthused tones about his chances against the likes of Canelo or Triple G. I don't think many people will be doing that on this Monday morning. I'm certainly not. And again, that's no disrespect to Eubank Jr. He did what he had to do. But I think to make people believe he's got anything like a realistic chance against those elite fighters, and he's fallen short at elite level previously, or even less than elite level, depends how you view George Groves and, and Billy Joe Saunders at the times they fought Chris Eubank Jr., but the point is, if we want to get excited and, and kind of talk up his chances in those fights, then we need to see a bit more from him than just, you know, a technical or tactical mastery of an opponent who has had his own shots at world glory and fallen short. Um, on the showing on Saturday night, while I was kind of qualified, kind of impressed by Eubank Jr., I would still back Triple G, even at his advanced age and perhaps fading a bit to beat him. I would certainly bet Canelo to come out on top. And in a rematch, depending on how much the Canelo loss took out of Saunders, I'd probably back Saunders in a rematch as well. There's not been enough improvement from Eubank because while he seems to have improved in some areas, that seems to have caused a compensatory kind of setback in others. Um, and that's not great for his status as a crowd pleaser, but also doesn't bode well for his kind of next assault on world level. But that's my view. Obviously, I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. What did you make of Eubank's performance and how do you see him getting on in the bigger fights at the top, top level? Um, also on the show, we saw uh, Clarissa Shield beat the holy hell out of poor Emma Cozin, um, or Emma Cozin rather, in the defence of three of the major four uh, middleweight titles. Uh, the owner of the other one is, of course, Shields' longtime rival and former amateur conqueror, Savannah Marshall, who holds the WBO belt. She was ringside and they got into a bit of a clash uh, after um, the Cozin decision had been announced. Shields got out of the ring. They went back and forth. I'm not sure either of them understood much of what the other was saying, such is the case where tensions are high after you know a fight or certainly one of them had been in a fight. Uh, but yeah, we look forward to that one in the summer and hopefully Marshall can provide a much sterner test than Cozin was able to. And she never stopped trying the Slovenian previously unbeaten, but Shields was just a class above. And unlike uh, Eubank Jr., I felt Shields did try to put an exclamation point on her performance and get Cozin out of there, but just found the Slovenian too tough and perhaps not a massive puncher in her own right, Shields. But she was always well ahead and dished out a bit of a beating in the fight. On the other end of the female scale, in terms of experience, we saw Caroline Dubois, UK Olympian and sister, of course, of Daniel Dubois, make her professional debut. She was very impressive. Didn't get the stoppage, but she was up against a very durable opponent and showed flashes of her quality as well. So her journey will be an exciting one to watch. Um, so that was good. Sam Antwi in the fight of the night against Connor Walker um, came out on top, retained his English uh, welterweight championship. That was a, a really good fight to watch as well. Um, really enjoyed Antwi uh, against Walker. Could have gone either way in my view. 
Um, and then we saw uh, Sam, is it Sam Gill? I want to get this right because he pulled off a great, Shane Gill, apologies, pulled off a great victory uh, against Steve Robinson. It might not seem like a great victory because they're both virtual novices, but Gill was brought in as the opponent, journeyman in a, a heavyweight six rounder. He was expected to lose against Robinson, uh, nicknamed Drago, of course, after Ivan from the Rocky films. Um, but Gill put, you know, turned the form book on its head, if you like. And on the big stage, it was on Sky Sports Live, brought, surely attracted a host of new fans by being on top throughout and getting a deserved victory. I think people were worried he might not get the benefit from the judges, but well done to him. And Chris Jenkins, a good victory for him over Julius Indongo, former unified world champion. Seen better days, it's fair to say, but Jenkins, former British champion at welterweight, got the job done. So well done to him as well. Overall, it was a pretty entertaining night of action. Not the best undercard I've ever seen. Um, and the main event didn't produce the war that many people were hoping for. But a good performance, a good performance from Chris Eubank Jr. Um, and it's going to be a struggle for Liam Williams now, I'd imagine. He's not going to want to go back to domestic level. So he might want to be considering his future at this point. Unfortunately for him, he'll be regretting that nightmare start. And then Eubank Jr. I think needs to add still more uh, facets to his game to make that next uh, attack on world level. But let me know what you guys thought, what your highlights of the show, what didn't you like so much. I'll respond to some of the comments. I'll be back on Thursday for Flexpectations, looking ahead predominantly to uh, Danny Jacobs against John Ryder, because um, that's on Saturday night at Alexandra Palace. And then the next Flexpectations, uh, sorry, the next Reflections, it gets hard, the next Reflections will be Monday uh, at the same time. And we'll be uh, reviewing the Ali Pali show. Really appreciate you watching and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.